Welcome back, everybody, to a very crazy cross-examination with a parrot? Who would have guessed, everyone? Actually, I'm kind of curious, though. What would happen? I wonder what would happen if you presented the parrot to the parrot. I bet something mind-blown would happen right there. I don't know. Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. Anyway, though, let's start cross-examining a parrot, I guess. Sure, whatever. I'm also kind of curious, like, why does it say pear? Why does it not say Polly? That's its name, isn't it? Anyway, whatever, let's do this, shall we? Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, uh, what do I say? Have we forgotten something? What's your name? What's the safe number? Hmm, yeah, what's the safe number? I I'm pretty sure have we forgotten something is the one I want to say. Remember, two days ago. Polly! Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget DL6! Squawk! If I can get Polly to say that here, that will prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Dot dot dot! Dot dot dot! Hello! Hello! Squawk! Dot dot dot! That's not what you're supposed to say! Forgot! Something we forgot! Hello! Hello! Squawk! Uh oh! It's not working, Nick! She won't say it! This is ridiculous! Why won't she say it? Tisk tisk tisk! Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained that the parrot, could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? Dot dot dot! Witness, you're here to speak! You must speak to me! Dot dot dot! Frankly, I can't believe that you're speaking to the parrot! Well... I guess we should try to get some information out of her! We need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi! Hmm... I suppose so anyway. Well then, okay, so what do I, well, let me, let me do this again. Let's see. Blah, 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 what should you say? What's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name? Polly, Polly, what's your name? Te pause. Okay, sorry about that. Polly, Polly, squawk! Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? Of course. Yes, it does. Ah. <sighs> huh. Fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity? Then show us this proof. Nick! Don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen. We're not here to answer the question of who is its caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... Hmm... Do we have that kind of proof, I wonder? Could it be, maybe? I don't know. The the erstwhile companion of the boat shop caretaker answers the name Polly. Hmm... I don't know if there is actually anything in here, though. Check the button. No clues found on the scene. Defense attorney trapped in the elevator returning from a lost trial with Sun's Mile. One bullet found in heart. The air murder weapon was fired twice. Yanni Yogi, age 37, court bailiff. Trapped with the Edgewards. Memory lost due to oxygen deprivation after his arrest. Fiance Polly Jenkins! Say what? Interesting. Okay then. The DL6 case file. That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to this parrot's name? Okay, well, I... Uh, case summary, victim data, suspect data. What was the page number, actually? I didn't, I didn't realize we were asking for that kind of details now. Let's see, case summary, victim data, suspect data. Alright, that would be it, then. The suspect data it is. It's on the suspect data page. Dot dot dot. 
This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Hmm, indeed it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He remembered the name of his fiance who committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Bah! A mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Really? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my do granddaughter's fiancé? She's only seven years old! Hmm. Indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other cor corrob corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer! One more! If we can just get one more piece of evidence! Right, but what? Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. That 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 You're serious, that wasn't it? Witness, you're here to speak, you must speak to me! Okay. Eh, whatever. Eh, hello! Hello, Squawk! So that wasn't it. Interesting. Witness, you can't just say hello and get anywhere. You must testify. Talk to her. Right. What do I say? Oh, no. What's the safe number? You don't get her to say this number of that safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? One, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight. Dot, dot, dot. My. What a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright. You aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the care... Hmm, actually, wait a second now. Could it be... Check? <laughs> You're kidding me. No way. Alright, sure, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll bluff. No, I won't. I won't bluff. I'll, I'll bite, I should say. Actually, it does. Okay, yeah, anyway. That's why I had her say it. Huh. Ridiculous. How can the number to his safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? Again, the DL6 case file. The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright. Where in this case file is something relating to that safe number? It was a case summary, right? And just, just double checking here, of course. Checking uh, case summary. Yes, indeed. Alright, case summary it is. It's on the case summary page! The case summary? Specifically the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28th? Why, that's today's date. 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for the safe, your honor. That's how important that date was to him! I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Bah! This is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. Yeah, it's not information you should be throwing around, Von Karma. <laughs> this has nothing to do with a date. Nothing! That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seem more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately! Witness! Tell us your name! Wait! This witness, he doesn't remember! No, it's okay. Dot dot dot! Oh, okay. I've, I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different! This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. 
Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order! Order! Yanni Yogi! So was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Dot dot dot. Yes, it was me. I did it. Dot dot dot. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond. He said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent. Get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really. But he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Dot dot dot. Then this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge? Against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Von Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is... Innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are clear to suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. NOT GUILTY! Woo oh, he's innocent! No! Oh! That is all. The court is adjourned. Objection! Did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No! Edgeworth? Your Honor. I object to your judgment! What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess! He's going to say he's guilty! He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident! He's going to tell them he killed his own dad! Uh oh, what do I do? Raise an objection! objection. The judgment has already been passed! I object to Edgeworth's outburst. Didn't something like this happen yesterday too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. <laughs> I like the I like the expression Von Karn was saying when Edgeworth objected though. I, I didn't really react to it, but at the same time I was like, okay, that's he's just like he's giving that evil grin right there, it's like eh, <laughs> I see now. <laughs> We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. Do we now? For 15 years, I have had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6. The statuette of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. Oh! 
Order! Order! This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statuette of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah! It's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We try this man for his crime 15 years ago. But he was just a kid! I think... I think I would like to take a five-minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. Wouldn't Von Karma's perfect win record still be done, though, because of the other thing? I don't know. December 28th, 2.24 p.m., District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. I'm sorry, Wright. I've just wasted all of your effort. Dot dot dot! Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, pal! I mean you! Kill your dad! I don't want- I didn't want to believe it myself, Detective. But, it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy! Just crazy! Dot dot dot! Dot dot dot! Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. Dot dot dot! What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it! He confessed that he did it! In court! I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. December 28th. De December 28th. December 28th! December 28th! 2.30 p.m. District Court de Courtroom number 3. I honestly was about to say December 28th twice in a row for real, though, so I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna roll with it. Heck with it. <laughs> then I would like to resume our trial. Judge! Miles Edgeworth has admitted to his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then through pointless. Let then through pointless. Let the defense do the cross-examining. The statute of limitations in the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. On karma. You knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? Dot dot dot. It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about this, this dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please! Please! Witness testimony. The DL6 incident. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. Ten second pause. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream. We were we were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! The same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination, the DL6 incident. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. 
I will actually be right back, everyone. I'm back, everybody. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. What was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost, and Mr. Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. Mr. Von Karma, you were handling that case. It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem in Von Karma's evidence. Yes, it actually was, Phoenix. How'd you know? How'd you remember that? That's amazing, actually. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator. Yes. Myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first. But then as time passed, no one, ca no one came to help. That is rather unfortunate. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at that time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then... Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up. What happened next? I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But, the air was getting so thick I panicked. So, you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was... in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. The gun fired once? Yes. I think. After I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed my head every day. That gunshot, and that horrible scream. The scream? It was a terrible scream, I remember it to this day. Hold on a second now. It was taken from his heart. Interesting, okay, I don't know if that actually means anything. Photograph of the scene of the murder. Hmm. I don't know, I'm just trying to think, like, wait a s Okay, anyway, moving on then. It was a terrible scream, I remember it to this day. To this day? Yes, I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is! One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence, but I don't know what it means. I better find out, and quick! Hmm... Well, I wonder what it could be, though. It's an interesting to think. My father and Mr. Yogi lost the composure and began to argue. Then just something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and then threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted him to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream, I remember to this day. Hmm. What could it be, though? Huh. Am I, am I, am I stuck, everyone? I don't know. I had to go... Gosh, okay, let me look at all the evidence here. Let's see. It's not. This doesn't have anything to do with it, I assume, anyway. What does the metal detector have anything to do with anything? Pro probably nothing, really, but... You never know, everyone. You never know. Could it be... Ele air and elevator was oxygen depleted at the time of the incident. No clues found on the scene. Defense attorney trapped in an elevator returning from a lost trial with son's mile. Miles at age nine. One bullet found in heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Hmm. Alrighty, then. Court and bailiff trapped with the edge where memory lost due to oxygen deprivation after his arrest, fiance Polly Jenkins. Okay. So, the DL6 case file says there was two shots. I wonder. That day I had a gun to observe as we went to leave, an earthquake struck. Father blood, and something fell on my feet, I picked them through it, and one of them. And later there was a single gunshot, Edgeworth. A single gunshot. Are you are you sure about that, good sir? Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot, and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. But that doesn't make sense! Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. 
You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence. Unless you can tell us what page it's- Why? Oh my gosh. Give me a second here. Let me look at it again. My goodness. They're so... They're always asking for details. So it was victim data. Fired twice. There we go. That's where we gotta present the thing. Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm. I see, I see. You do have a point. Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with this case? Uh, do I? I wonder, do I have any... Yeah, I kind of do, actually. Because I, I do see something a little bit suspicious with that window right there, so... Perhaps that's what we're looking for, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Let's say yes. Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma. Save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Very, oops. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident. Yes, I kind of do. It's, well, hmm. I mean, I'm assuming it's this, but at the same time, could it be that maybe? No, probably not. It's this. Look at this photograph. Why second guess yourself, of course. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see the victim lying there. Is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice, at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Y Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Yeah, we could be we are going to be saying that for the entire series. I, okay, now show the judge the contradiction in this photo. Well, obviously, it's up here, of course, right? As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. Hey, bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus... Someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? Not a car, that's for sure, anyway. It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. Dot dot dot. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6. Incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. Well, 
I might as well just take him up on that offer real quick. Elevator. District Court. Air in the elevator was oxygen depleted at the time of incident. No clues found on the scene. Well, why was that exactly? I wonder. Hmm. Who knows? Anyway. The case summary. That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found in the scene. Dot dot dot. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. You don't say. Order. I will have order. Dot dot dot. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I am afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. Tsk, tsk, tsk. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah! How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? Dot, dot, dot. I'm sorry, Maya. What? I... It looks like I was wrong. Nick! If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No! But you said you don't... You... You do it, Nick! You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent! Dot dot dot. I'm sorry. It's just when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it, I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now... I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick! Well, it seems we that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though. That was not your intention. Dot dot dot. Yes, I did. Dot dot dot! Oh no! He's confessing! Dot dot dot! Very well. The statuette of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying, but my mind's going b gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright, why would I not have an objection, but I'm going to actually raise that objection on the next exciting episode, everyone. <laughs> this is perhaps the ultimate cliffhanger of the series, maybe? I don't know, maybe, possibly. I don't know anything, but we'll find out next time, everyone. <laughs> See you later.